What's up, everyone? Mr. Florida here, FG. Just bringing you a little video today on this. Uh, only going to play a few minutes, but I just want to show you this uh, this guy's YouTube page. If you're not following it already, the best hands down non boring weather uh, report that could uh, weather guy you could follow. So we'll just uh, I'm going to re rewind this for a little bit. And we'll just uh, a powerful hurricane that's really all hurricanes are in one way or another. I want to show you what can happen over toward the Yucatan of Mexico, kind of what's going on first, and watching what. So just watch this for a minute. This guy has some great, um, you, uh, some great website links, uh, weather wise, you could follow. Um, in like a minute or two, he's going to give it to you, but great, great. Uh, I li actually live in. Uh, Florida, like right here, like, like an hour below Jacksonville. Um, I don't live in a flood zone. I don't live near any water. So I hopefully I bought a house in the right spot, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully I'm not putting any uh, disaster videos out at the end of the week. But I live like right there. So I'm hoping to, no, no offense to the South people, but I hope it goes that way and not up this way. Western Cuba, where most of the heaviest weather should stay to the north. So I want to get into what we can expect near uh, Merida. Over look how big that is. And then start to look down the road. Now, this could be the first direct hit right into the Tampa area in over 100 years. A very high concern. But the landfall eventually down the road could be anywhere from near Tampa all the way south through Fort Myers uh, that still needs to be fine-tuned. So with that, uh, do this channel for safety. So if you're in the Tampa, St. Petersburg area, all the way down through, say, Fort Myers, if you have any uh, alerts to evacuate or if the local officials ask you to evacuate, please, please do so. Then as we work inland, I am concerned with some flooding. And uh, the people on the West Florida. Coast are going to get Florida. slammed. Watching Central Florida right now. Man. TV.com, a great resource for live streaming. Just no rest for them people. And County by county, exactly what you could expect to get. WFTV.com, they'll be live streaming through the entire uh, system as it works. You said that real fast. That was W like W, F like Frank, T like Tom, V like Victor. WFTV.com. It's like a local um, Orlando uh, news channel, but it gives pretty good weather reports if you're in that uh, – if you're in that region, but this whole area of Florida got slammed the last time, and that Cedar Key, that little island, it's like right, I think it's like a below Tampa or above Tampa. It's like right, I think it's like right there. That got literally decimated. I don't know why they just keep, I don't know, keep rebuilding on that uh, on that island. So let's see what else this guy's gonna say. The very specifics on what you could expect. Uh, where you are. And then down the road, I'm a little more optimistic for the Bahamas and watching Bermuda, so I want to expand things out. Still a bit concerned for us in the northern Bahamas. I'm mon monitoring Freeport over toward uh, New Providence for some eventual or the, at least the potential of some tropical storm impacts. So Watch this. Out in time, uh, nice and slowly. Here, I do apologize. This video is going to be a little bit long. But now for today, uh, it is a tropical storm and it ramped up. This guy's the best. Look. This forecast that I showed you yesterday is generally on track, and that's my goal, not to have any wow. big changes uh, with the forecast to give you a heads 110 up. 110 so miles an hour. I made some minor tweaks in this, but really Oof. nothing big from uh, yesterday, which is which is good. Winds at 75 miles per hour tomorrow, so it will be, wow. tomorrow. It'll be Hurricane Milton. Then it is going to strengthen more so on Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, that eventual uh -oh. rainfall. Now, uh, it's also not only do I not know exactly where it's going to come on shore yet, which makes sense uh, because it's still kind of getting its uh -oh. act together, uh, but also the timing's a little bit different. The timing this time of year is trickier because they're fronts to the north, so sometimes it could bring it in a little bit quicker. Sometimes things can slow up. We'll cover that, but winds could be near 100 miles per hour. That is nuts. 15, with the landfall, as of now, near the uh, St. Petersburg area, working. They just got hit last week. Now they're getting more. Unreal. Unbelievable. Hopefully it's not a big disastrous response like uh, North Carolina is getting right now. Let's see. What happened?
right across what happened? Central Florida. So again, uh, please stay tuned to uh, WFTV because with Hurricane Ian, for example, there are so many different spots uh, that WFTV in Central Florida. There are a lot of flood emergencies. So I want you to have the very latest information on that. And then this swings off the uh, space. He's going to give you another website too in a second. It's pretty good. A subtropical system. It's going to get tied up into a front. On this heading, this would keep the worst weather north of the northern Bahamas, uh, just to the north of the Yucatan, and uh, significantly north of Cuba in Florida, the Florida Keys. Heaviest weather would be to the north, but if this were to work into, say, the Fort Myers area, of course, that would shift everything. Uh, to That's the another good map. National Hurricane Center, which they did issue tropical storm warnings, which makes good sense for the extreme northern portions of the Yucatan of Mexico. The hurricane conditions uh, are going to stay to the north. So if you're in Merida, if you're in Cancun, the hurricane conditions will be to the north over the open waters of the uh, Gulf of Mexico and then substantially to the north of western Cuba, which is very good news, of course, for western Cuba. And again, all of this stays away uh, for Jamaica, wow. the Cayman Islands, it stays away uh, back through Puerto Rico. All of this is going to be running right up here. i got to go buy my... Uh... Milk, bread, and eggs. <laughs> some some people know what I'm talking about. Some people won't. It's it, it refers to like the people who live up north. You know, every time it snows, they got to go out and buy the milk, bread, and eggs. You know, like they're going to be stranded for a month. You know, the, the people they you know they can't sit home for more than two hours. It doesn't matter if there's two foot of snow or uh, two inches. The second it stops snowing, they're all out driving around. So I don't know why they're out buying milk, bread, and you know eggs every time before a snowstorm. The the uh, the uh, food places are packed. Like those people have you know no food in their pantry. Uh, I don't know. Well, some of them could uh, use a couple of days with no food. <laughs> not to be mean or not like that, but I don't know. Little healthier. So let me go model by model for you. The American model, same thing, brings us in uh, near the Tampa area with a landfall in the afternoon on Wednesday. So a lot of the uh -oh. action is going to be through the day on Wednesday. Uh, winds around 150 miles per hour at landfall, and then it becomes a tropical storm offshore as it transitions, kind of gets tied up into a front. So, like I said, I live I live out in the middle of farmland right here. I don't live. Near any city, the nearest city is like 20 minutes away. So I live out in the, literally out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so, like I said, we got we got no gas, no electric. I mean, we do have electric, but that's basically it. You know, everything we got well water, we got septic. Um, I went out, I got probably 50 gallons of gas. I have a container that's a storage container that's like two feet off, a foot and a half off the ground. Um, so even if the the house does flood, I could probably still take refuge in that. Um, I could even probably live there if I had to. But anyway, with the dog, um, it's I got a kayak, so I can I can float myself away if I have to. But like I said, I got fifty gallons of gas. I got batteries. I probably got I don't know thirty gallons of water. Um, I'm pretty well prepared. I have two generators. I have pumps. I have every power tool imaginable. Um, I got a few guns to keep me safe. Speaking of guns, the, uh, the city of Okeechobee, which is like right there, um, the last hurricane, they banned the sale, I believe, the sale of guns, sale of ammunition, and you couldn't conceal carry in the city for the duration of the hurricane, I think. I think DeSantis stepped in and pretty much could have put a kibosh on it because it's it's I don't think it's lawful compared to the carry laws we have in Florida. Um, but that's what they did. So in the time you really, really need it, you know, you, you couldn't, you know, carry your you, know, you can't carry the gun in open public anyway. It's gotta be concealed, but um, and there's certain places you could go with it, some places you can't. But in the time of need, when you desperately need it, you couldn't use it. So I don't know what's going to happen with that, but um, it's, I, I don't know. I'm not going to get into the gun debate, but you should be able to defend yourself. But it's not like the Florida is like the wild, wild west where, uh, you know, you get mugged left and right. Well, at least not around here <laughs> anyway. Um, and like I said, everybody, you know, 
you, it's a concealed carry state. You could legally conceal carry a gun with you know certain requirements. So, like they say, uh, what do they say? Armed societies. Uh, uh, I can't think of the, the saying. Armed societies, a civil society. No, that's not it. But anyway, you know, everybody pretty much behaves in Florida for the most part because you don't know what that person has under their coat or under their shirt or what they're going to present to you. So you got to behave in Florida and just uh, mind your own business and do your right thing and take care of your family. So we'll play like 30 more seconds of this guy. And becomes a little more subtropical. Now, the European model is very... He has one more good clip coming up. Later on the day on Wednesday would be near 100 miles per hour, uh, very close to Tampa, south, maybe Anna Marie Island, Clearwater could be even a touch south of there, watching over toward uh, Bradenton as this moves on shore, and then working across once again. So that's a European model, very similar to the American model. Now, the Canadian model is different. It's more south. In that's the what we need right there. We have a landfall late in the day Thursday. We need it down that's south. Do Sorry, Miami. So it's kind of a wait and see on a few things. Sorry, Miami. A few things. We need it down there. They're making the uh, prep for tropical storm and hurricane conditions throughout much of the peninsula. The people in Key West got it too. <laughs> they got it too nice. The weather's too nice down there. I'm jealous. The Fort Myers area, the potential of that. And then swinging back here, the uh, icon model shows a hurricane wow. uh, Wednesday morning. This one's a little earlier. Now, I'm leading to both the American and European model. So I don't like to just show you everything and leave you hanging. I kind of what I'm thinking. I'm assuming this ain't going to fizzle I'm out. Thinking. I do think this comes in. Very close to the St. Petersburg area, winds roughly around 100 miles per hour or more. That is we'll nuts. The intensity in just a moment, but I do want to show you kind of everything. Yeah, that look is at this. Out there. So you have all the information. This guy's the best. Look. Now, the computer models have been very tropical. Tidbits.com is the website I was talking about. Got to go check that out. And if you don't subscribe to this guy, subscribe to him. He's Mr. Weatherman on YouTube. I try to take all these squiggly lines. Kind of narrow it down for you now out in time it does show strength. i'll put a link this to his here, channel in the description it's a little tricky with, with the fronts because you get those small fronts moving in so is the intensity uh because if the fronts uh could the, the fronts could kind of play a factor in this i'll just believe it at that but this is a, a day out this is two days out so two days out let's go up in time these wow so i'm not going to bore you anymore i'm going to end this video but anyway uh, everybody in Florida, just be prepared. Go buy your milk, eggs, and eggs and water, and uh, just prepare for the worst. And I would gather all your important papers and medicine and everything else, and put it in a backpack in case the uh, the SHIT hits the fan and you gotta you gotta leave. So I'm prepared. I could literally jump in my kayak with the dog in two minutes and have everything I need and back evacuate the house. I got everything prepared and set. So like I said, I live out in the middle of nowhere. It's, you know, I have zero neighbors. I live on, my street is pretty much, it's sand. There's no road. It's the, pretty much deserted. There's five houses and it's half a mile long. There's no HOA. Um, the lot is one point. It's well over an acre of land. Um, everybody in this development has at least one acre of land. So no HOA, you could have cows, you could park trucks, buses, you could have cows, cattle, whatever you want on your property, it's sky's the limit. So, like I said, I have no neighbors, to, I got one one nice neighbor on the bit of left of me, and I have zero neighbors, nowhere else, except all the way down the road. So, anyway, we'll see what happens, and hopefully I'm not going to be making a disaster video. All right, I'll see you later. And I uh, hope everybody has a good weekend. See you.